What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a feature that's coming in Rhino 8 that you can test out in the Rhino beta. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so remember that if you have a Rhino license, you can download the Rhino 8 beta and give it a try. And I will link to that in the notes down below if you wanna give it a try. But in this video in particular, we're gonna talk about this new shrink wrap function that has been added in this beta version. And so this is an interesting function because really what it's good at doing is it's good at taking multiple different input objects and creating a solid mesh. So this works for like point cloud meshes and other things like that, where you can um, basically bring in data and then shrink wrap a mesh over them, or you can combine objects um, in order to create like a 3D printable mesh. And so this is an interesting feature for me. Um, so basically the way that it works is you take multiple different objects. So say that we've got just this sphere and then this these extruded rectangles, you can take all of these. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in shrink wrap. And so when I do that, what it's gonna do is it's gonna pop up this little window right here. One thing to note about this is you do have options over here to preview the mesh that it's going to create right here, which I usually turn on. Um, if you're dealing with a lot of geometry here, this could kind of uh, slow down your computer because there's a lot of uh, there, there's a lot of math going on in the creation of these objects. The other thing that I do um, is click on the hide input objects. That's going to give me a good idea of the mesh this is going to create. And so basically what it's doing is it's shrinking a mesh over all of these objects, creating one single um, solid mesh. And so there's some things that you can do with this. Like for example, um, you can set a target edge length. And so say that I was to bring this target edge length down to like 0.25, notice how this is going to adjust, but this is going to create smaller um, edges in a lot of areas in here like this. Now note that, and uh, you probably shouldn't do this with your computer, but um, if you turn the polygon optimization completely off, like this, notice how you're gonna get a mesh that looks like this. And at that point, this is just creating a ton of these different edges in here. And um, it's not trying to optimize them or anything like that. And you can get some pretty heavy geometry in here. Um, so you wanna be a little bit careful with that when you do that. You probably wanna set your polygon op optimization to at least one, um, but obviously you can do more than that, right? If I was to type in 100%, it's going to try to 100% optimize this mesh right here. And so there are some things in here that you can try to do with like smoothing this out as well. So if I was to type in 10 smoothing iterations, notice how it's gonna come in here and smooth out some of this geometry. But once you're done, if you click on okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and move this off to the side so you can take a look at it. This is created like a full on 3D printable mesh. And while obviously like simple um, shapes like this probably aren't the 100% um, target for this, you can see how creating that was really easy. Now from here, there's a couple things that you might do. So one of the interesting things you could do is you could take the whole thing, you could shrink wrap it again, and you could set your offset like this, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my preview on. But what this is gonna allow you to do is it's gonna allow you to take that and I'm gonna say no to polygon optimization right here. But we're gonna go ahead and click on okay and basically what that's done is that's created a larger version of this outside of the smaller version. And so if you were to take a clipping plane across this, I'm just going to create a rectangle right here. You can kind of see this. You can see how what this has done is this give, has given us this smaller object and this larger object just like this. And you could use those together to create like a shell. So if you were gonna 3D print this, you could use this to generate a shell um, that would be easier to 3D print. And so one other thing that you might think about doing with this, because obviously this is not the uh, prettiest mesh in the world, um, but what you could do is you could take this and you could run a quad remesh on it as well. So if I take this and run a quad remesh, what this is going to do is this is going to allow me to set like a target quad count. I'm going to go ahead and click on preview right here. I'm going to hide my input objects, but notice how you could use this in order to remesh this to more of a quad shape. And I could bump this up um, if I wanted to keep more of that geometry in here like this, but you can see how you can take these objects and I'm going to move this over a little bit and um, you could use this to shrink wrap the objects and then run it through the quad remesh in order to get quads in here as well. Now, obviously when it does a quad remesh in here, it's kind of like moving the edges and vertices around. So if you're looking for like ultra precise 
stuff, this might not be your best bet. But honestly, um, I'm not sure that this is really giving you ultra precise results anyway as a part of the shrink wrap process. But what it is doing is it's really quickly getting you close and giving you a shape that you can then work with. And this is like a full on solid that you could then take to a 3D printer or whatever you wanted to do. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this new feature. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.